Okay, so we were able to run this code and we understood something what is happening behind the scene, right? So basically we know now that as a programmer, as a, as a Java developer, you write our Java code, which will be having dot Java extension and that gets compiled by Java C. And then when you, when you compile the code, what you get in output is a byte code, which will be having dot class file. And then you can run the dot class file in your JVM. I mean, basically it's a part of JRE which will have JVM as well as a library, a lot of classes. And then everything is a part of a JRE. That JRE you will be installing on OS, right? So basically you need to have a hardware, of course you need a machine to run, right? That machine will be having an OS and then OS will be having a JRE which, is a, which will have JVM. But as a developer, you will need one more tool which is JDK. Now when you install a new JDK, you get the updated JRE and JVM with it. Okay, so the version of JDK which we are using is JDK 17, which is LTS, which is long term support. And in every new version, you get some minor extra features, right? So even if you are uh, watching this after 10 years or 8 years or 5 years, you will be having new version of Java. Of course, next 5 years, you will get 10 new versions and every new version will have minor updates. But the base thing remains same, right? Uh, so whatever you are learning is actually from Java 1 itself. The system dot 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 is same in Java 1. So don't worry about the new updates. The core concept will remain same. Okay, cool. Now once you have uh, this thing, what next we can do? Now think about this world. Of course, first of all, why we build software? We build software so that we can solve a problem. Now what problem we are trying to solve? Uh, so basically we are trying to solve the real world problems. Uh, with the help of virtual world. Example, you wanted to some buy something, so you got Amazon, which delivers everything at home. So you got Amazon as an online service. You wanted to book a cab, you got Uber. So for every problem, we have a solution in the virtual world, right? So banking, every, everything is happening online. Now, when you say you are replacing the real world with a virtual world solution, so basically we need to work with one thing. The most important thing now is actually data. So basically we want to work with data. So how will you work with data? So basically you need data as well as processing on it. So whatever, when you build, we build a project or when you build an application, what we are doing is we are doing the processing on data. Now this data can be coming from user or something. So maybe you will accept the data from the user and then you will do some work with it. Maybe you want to store this data. Now, where exactly do we store data? So we store data in something called database. So we have a database here in which you'll be storing your data. So whatever data you're getting from the user or from after processing. So let's say we got a user here, user sends us data. We will apply a processing on that. So we will do some work in between. And then at the end, we might store data in database. Now this database is actually a permanent storage or a persistent storage, which you say. Now, when you say it is permanent, that doesn't mean you can't change it. Of course you can, you can replace the values as well, but then the data stays there. Okay. So if, if you just store it and if, even if you shut down your machine, the data will be stored. Example, when you copy movies or games on your laptop, it stays there, right? It will get deleted when you say delete, but the data stays there. So this makes sense, right? But when I say you will receive data from the user and then you will be doing some processing on that where you will store the data for temporary purpose. Of course, the database is there for permanent storage, but during processing, you have to store your data somewhere and that somewhere is variable. So this is where you store your data. Now, what is variable? So imagine variable as a box and in this box, you will store your data. Now, what data you want to store? Your data can be numeric, it can be text, it can be image, whatever you want to store. So you can store that data in this variable. Now, I'm not talking specific to Java. In general, when you say you want to store data, you will store that in a box and that box will have a type to it. It can be of type numbers, it can be of type text or image or video. So here we are trying to store data, right? So let's say I want to store a number which is five. So this box will have a number five and it will also have a name to it. Maybe I can give a name, let's say a number. It doesn't matter what name you give. Of course, there are some restrictions on names, but num works. You can use any name which you like. Maybe you can create one more box here and you want to store the number itself, but let's say a decimal value, something like 6.5. You can do that, okay? And maybe you can have a different value to it, different name to it. Maybe you can say marks or grades. Uh, maybe you want to have one more box where you want to store your name. So I can do that. I can store my name as Naveen and it will have a variable name. So maybe I can say this is user. So user is Naveen. So basically what you do is you create a box and inside the, inside the box will be having values. Now this box are actually called variables. So we can name this box as 
a variable okay and so what we got till now we got that a box will be called a variable and you'll be having a name to it you will be having a value so name and value will be there apart from that you know java is actually called strongly typed language now what it means is whatever variable you want to create so if you want to store the data of course java says hey we'll accept the data but tell tell me also what kind of box you want a different type of data will require different box okay that makes sense so i will say hey java i want to store a number so i want to create a box for me which will accept numbers so we can say okay this makes sense number will go there we can also treat this as a number but this is a text right so in java we call them as a string right so text will be having a string so this box type is string what about this box of course we say this is a number this is also a number but in number as well we have a category inside it so one of the category i will mention is this we can if you want to store numbers we can store that in something called int now int means integer okay so we can store data in the integer format but we cannot store 6.5 in int because 6.5 is a real number so int will accept numbers but why it is called int why not natural numbers or whole numbers is because maybe you want to store negative values as well so remember your maths concept so we have negative numbers to positive values so everything will be considered as int so we can store minus 5 plus 5 that's your choice okay so this makes sense so what i will do now is if i go back to the code so of course we want to print hello world but we have done that now i want to store values so that i can do some processing on it now what kind of processing i want to do maybe i can i want to add two numbers maybe 2 plus 2 or 5 plus 6 simple stuff right but before that we'll see how do we store data even if you don't store data you can just go inside this system.out.print whatever operation you want to perform you want to say 3 plus 5 that will work so you can just go back here and say compile and run so remember this thing every time you make a change just make sure that you compile it first so the first step is compilation and then running and you can see we got the output which is 8 just ignore this percentage symbol as of now uh, actually there's one more thing I, I wanted to mention Whenever you print something, let's say I want to print this number here as well. I want to perform different options. So you can write multiple statements for different operations you want to perform. So you can say 8 plus 7. So we are doing addition here and then addition here. Let's clear the screen. Okay, I have to first compile. Okay, that's what. Compile, run, and you can see we got the value. Now the only thing you can see is the result are a bit that together right we want to give a space or maybe i can print 15 on new line so what you can do is instead of using print you can actually use something called print ln now print ln means print new line so it will print and it will go on new line so we can do that here as well so just say ln ln at the end print ln which is print new line and now compile run and you can see we got the value we got 5 and 15 so from now we'll not be using print we'll be using ln print ln okay so again print ln means it will print it will go on new line so we got print ln now what else we can do here so i don't want to perform the operation here remove that i want to store that value first so how do we store of course we need box right so i can say num1 i can as i mentioned i can use any variable name so let's say num1 or to start with let's say num just to keep it simple and then we can give a value to it let's say value is 3 so remember you have to mention the variable name and then we have to mention the value for it and at the end of course you can put a semicolon so we can see we got num equal to 3 and we got a semicolon so in java after every statement you have to give a semicolon you might be thinking hey why don't we have a semicolon here it's because that is a block so we don't put a, a semicolon out uh, at the end of a block the reason is it signifies that's the end here if you don't mention semicolon how do we define that that's the end so it's good to put semicolon at the end and anyway java will give you error if you don't do that the next thing we have to do here is we have to also mention the type what type of num is this so we can say int now we have to say first you have to specify the type and then you mention the variable name maybe uh, if you have learned or some other languages where you put the type afterwards in java we first put the value or put the type and then we put the name then we assign the value now this equal to here is called assignment operator because you are assigning a value so what it will do is it will take the value from the right hand side it will assign the value to the left hand side okay remember this equal to will take the value from the right hand side it will assign the value to the left hand side okay so we got a variable which is of type int okay so this is num which is a variable and then we can print it now let's only print the value that's it nothing much i will say save now once you click on save you have to compile the code and run the code and you can see we got three okay cool so now can i create more variables we can actually so let me just rename the value variable from num to num1 and 
Here as well, I will print num1. Okay, and then I will create one more variable which is num2 is equal to. So every time you want to get a variable, just mention the type which is int of whatever type of variable you're creating. At this point, we are working with numbers. So we'll say int num2 equal to. Uh, we can assign the value which is 5. So we got 3 and 5. Here, what you can do is you can actually perform the operation here itself. So you can say num1 plus num2. That works. So instead of adding values, we can also add the variables. Okay, so now we are what we're doing is we are saying num1 plus num2. And the addition will be getting printed. Let's try. So I can just go back here and say compile, run. And you can see we got 8. You know what? Instead of adding it inside this, it's not a good practice. What you can do is we can create another variable called result. And that's right. Variables are free to use. Of course, behind the scene, it is consuming a lot of memory. Uh, but it's working, right? As of It's free as of now. But later on, we'll focus on how can you make your code more efficient so that it will use less space, right? At this point, it works. So we can say num1 plus. So whatever operation you want to perform, you can do that here. And instead of printing and addition, doing addition here, we can simply print result. So what you're doing now is you're adding the value. And then you are storing that in a result. And then you're printing it. It should work. Let's try. Compile, run, and you can see we got eight. So this is working. So that's how you can you can create variables. So remember this thing. Every time you want to create a variable, you have to you first need a name for it. At this point is num1. You have to also mention the type of it. At this point, this is int, and we have to assign the value for it. In, in the upcoming videos, we'll talk about how can you uh, create a variable which will be having a name with a, with a different type and different value. Okay, so that's it from this video.